Hello everyone, my name is the Mad Scorpion and welcome to another reset update, this time from a tree just because I was tired of being on the ground. So, the Iron Banner has once again ended, it will be back around next season more than likely, as the next episode is, if I'm recalling off the top of my head, two weeks around the corner. Now, aside from that, we do have another Dev Insight blog coming for the future of Destiny that will be coming out tomorrow. I will be covering that as soon as possible. Of course, as I am working throughout the week, it will happen after I get home from work, so it might be a little bit later into the afternoon. However, getting into the week at large, we do have an active Trials booster that will be coming around, of course, when Trials comes back this Friday. So if you have any reason to go into Trials other than just not having fun in Destiny, there is your reason to actually go. And aside from that, just wrapping up as well, the Bright Dust gift, it will still be going on until October 6th. So you have just over two weeks left, so you can get another free 350, or no, hang on, math, around 700 Bright Dust if I'm remembering the maths. However, getting into the week at large, actually, the Nightfall this week is the Insight Terminus, which isn't that hard for the Grandmaster. It does have some sketchy spots. Then again, most people who have been through it know it by the back of their hand now, so it's not terribly difficult. Although at the same time, for new people, it can be challenging, though I will say it will get easier over time. The weapon to hunt for is the rebranded Warden's Law, which is of the two burst hand cannon family. It is still one of the rare versions because I believe this is the only kinetic one. Yes, there is a stasis one, but this is the only kinetic, which is just a little bit better for damage fully. It does have perks for the PvP side and perks for the PvE side, plus, of course, working with Lucky Pants. This is pretty much one of the options for a Nightfall weapon that I'd say is well worth getting the Adept if you try to go for it. Moving on into the Crucible at large, we don't have a Labs mode currently, however, we do have Sparrow Control and Clash in terms of 6v6. For 3v3, it is Showdown and Competitive as usual, and 1v6 is the usual of Free For All Rumble. I almost said Fromble. That is just not the right words. Moving into the weekly rotator, starting with the featured raid, it is the Last Wish raid, which of course means you can farm out Ribbon and 1000 voices as many times as you wish if you are still hunting that red beam of death, or if you're looking for any of the freshly, well, I say freshly, it was three seasons ago, restored red border weapons from Last Wish, you can get a crafted roll of an Ahamkara bone rifle, go ahead and try, because there is some really easy farming methods, especially if you go after Kali and just have a cheese team together. However, the dungeon is the Pit of Heresy, which next to the Shadow Throne is the next least worth farming for the dungeon, as the exotic like Wishbreaker, um, or Wishbreaker, Wish Ender with Shadow Throne is exotic quest, which is the Xenophage if you don't know, but at the same time, the dungeon itself, it doesn't have a master mode, so you can't get any artifice armor for it. It used to be a really good stat armor farm, but then things changed, and now it's just a dungeon on the moon. So if you want the pinnacle, that's literally all I would say is worth getting from it. The exotic mission itself is Operation Seraph Shield, which is still a pretty solid mission altogether. It gives you access to the Revision Zero Exotic Pulse Rifle, which comes with either four burst or two burst because it does work that way. It switches both sides, as well as having a variety of good perks, whether it be something like Outlaw, Fourth Time to Charm, uh, I think Outlaw, but uh, it's been a while since I actually thought about that weapon, but it is pretty solid anti-barrier, especially when anti-barrier is no longer available on long-range weapons. Plus, the sniper mode is really powerful against champions in case you want a basic primary that can come with some extra pop. Now, the weapons, aside from Revision Zero, is, of course, the Seraph weapons from the Associate Season, some of which are not exactly worth it, I'd say, but there is Quenty. Uh, Quint there is plenty of good quality items in there, especially the machine gun from the Associate Season. I know a lot of people use that for Warlord's Ruin and a combination of fourth times the charm and target lock. Of course, very solid for just burst damage LMG, as much as that sounds like heresy. However, there is, of course, the Ikelos weapons you can come across in the same mission in case you wish to get some classics that have been rebranded and are still even useful to this day. Moving into our raid challenges, we start off with Salvation's Edge. It's still not knowing exactly what it means, but we have the very geometry challenge for whatever encounter that applies to. Next for the featured raid, my loadout made a bit of an oopsie. Even though it says Last Wish, it still says that Crota's End is featured, and it says all challenges are active, also while saying none are active. So let's go ahead and take that with a grain of salt and say that is not accurate. Moving into the rest of the raids, though, we have Root of Nightmares challenge, which is Cosmic Equilibrium, aka Third Encounter Boss challenge. King's Fall, the grass is always greener, which I keep forgetting what the hell this means. Vow of the Disciple, which is Looping Catalyst, the Rolk final boss challenge. 
Vault of Glass is the only Oracle for you Oracle challenge. Deepstone Crypt is the Copies of Copies Atrax boss challenge. Garner Salvation 0 to 100 Sanctified Mind boss final challenge, as well as Last Wish, of course, being featured raid. All challenges are active, actually. So if you want to farm out any of the red borders or the exotic, like I said, go for it. It is infinite. Now, speaking of focused armors as well, the master mode on Salvation's Edge is currently mobility. And as Last Wish is still a outdated raid with no master mode raid, there is no adepts or armor focusing because that is just pretty much where it all ends. Wrapping it all up, we do have the Legendaries of Eternity rotation, which is Cabal, Taken, and Crota, in case you are looking for some Dares of Eternity drops. Now, moving into the season at large, again, we do have just over two weeks left until the next episode launches, and because of that, we are not getting any more weekly challenges. We are in week 17, and it ended at week 15. So if you wanted to either go for the large pile of bright dust at the end of all these challenges or wanted to accrue some extra XP or just kind of hammer out some bright dust cosmetics or whatever else you can get out of the seasonal challenges, you will not be getting any more. So once again, I will reiterate, you have the only ones you will be getting. So just go ahead and double back through and complete everything you can. Otherwise, you know, you did what you can, did what you got, and that's where you say, say la vie to seasonal challenges. Now, moving into the Eververse store from the top, just because I don't want to drop down. On the front page, again, uh, I will also reiterate, with the episode ending, some stuff is going to be a bit limited. Again, with the Bright Dust, I'm, I need to make sure I actually acquire that. But with the season ending, there is some stuff right here that will be gone for a little bit in terms of easy access. Basically, if you want it, get it for silver while you can, because there is a very good chance that it won't be available for Bright Dust before the episode ends. And plus with that, usually it is the episode or season after the one it disappeared on that they actually come out again in the archive. They will possibly come up for Bright Dust in the future, but I will also just warn you, otherwise get it for Bright Dust or Silver while you can. Moving into the Bright Dust store itself, for a shader we have Gloam Strife, which it, there isn't really good way to say this. This is kind of one of those shaders that I looked at and said, what the hell were they thinking? Because it gives you an odd wood texture and gives you some not so great looking colors. Aside from that, that is pretty much all I got to say regarding Gloam Strife. Oiled Gunmetal from Season of the Undying. It's pretty self-explanatory. Imagine a just traditional weapon metal, but it was a little bit oily. It fits right into the Callus's oil pits or whatever they call. I know there was a lot of oil sheet in Callus. Then for a transmat, we have the Box of Tricks transmat effects from Season of the Undying, which is pretty self-explanatory. You pop out of a chest Minecraft style. Next is Helmets for the original Curse of Osiris Everborough set. In case you wanted the Omega Mechanos or any of the other variety armors for the variety of other characters. If you wanted the helmet for Bright Dust and didn't want to have to go to the archive and get it with silver, they are currently available for all three of your characters, so go ahead and get that while you can. Next is the Coach Dance from Season of the Seraph, which for once I actually feel like I would, un I know the reference maybe for this dance, but otherwise it's, you know, another one of those variety dances. If you like it, get it. Otherwise, just stop the dance. Next is the main store, continuing with our flares with shaders and transmats, Sunrise Warrior, which was one of those shaders that I always wanted to try and make work because I liked the color combination. I just hated the order. Like I would much rather have the white with that hot metallic pink as undertones rather than the pink be the main color. But then again, that is just me. I do think this one looks a little bit better on weapons anyway. Next is First Light from Season of Opulence, which it's hard to tell whether or not this is Dawn or First Light as in the First Guardian or anything specifically, but it is actually looking at the auto rifle that I forget the name of from this season. It has a pretty cool glow scheme, so this might actually rock pretty good on some glowing armor in case you wanted to try it out. Next is Golden Age Wine, which is one of those ones that looks like it could have been callus themed, but even still, it is not exactly callus themed. Otherwise, it's a nice clean looking look for some regal armor sets otherwise. And Shifting Cross Phase, which if I recall, this is actually a live shader based on that name. Although I don't see it precisely, but this is kind of a offshoot of Vex Chrome look if you want to look like Ver Mercury. Although actually looking at it, this could just be the look for the new Vex that have been coming out with the season. Next into Transmats, we have the Jade Coin effects in case you wanted to pop out of, you know, Drifter's old Gambit Jade Coin. Then a Harpy Entrance, which if you want to pop out of a 
I forget the name of Gorgon. Uh, if you want to pop out of a Gorgon, not a Harpy, you can go ahead and do that. And then the Ghost Purple, which is definitely one of those old Blue Rary transmat effects from the vanilla Destiny 2 that they colored purple and made it purple and just said it's a purple. Next is one of the items that I see most often from my friends, the more cowbell emote, in case you wanted to always have more cowbell, that old SNL skit. Next is taking out the trash for the average carry group, which is basically, uh, if you are the trash, you get in the trash and you know, that's just it, you are the trash. Then next is the Aoki Foss Mark 7. It's basically a sparrow that went with a similar ship name there wasn't a good idea of what to call it, aside from this look like IndyCar F1 style stuff. And of course, there is going to be something that decides to not load while I'm looking at it live. Next is the Penumbral Shell, which is a part of the new Black Armory set that was a part of a typical Sparrow ship and shell set that came out with this season. It was from Act 1. Nice Black Armory Radiance, otherwise a nice themed cross for Black Armory. I said Black Armory a lot this time. Next is the Bipectinate Craft. I don't know if I said that word, but essentially this is from Season of the Witch. That is a Sparrow Ship and S Sparrow Ship and Shell set that was a part of basically the Lucent Moths from the Old Throne World. If you haven't found them, they're very cute collectible. Checking back to that Sparrow just in case to see if it loads, and it's not. Moving on to the big ticket item. We have Tritone, which I believe, tri Triton, something like that. This is for Euphony, the Threadling Linear Fusion Rifle from the uh, Salvation's Edge Raid. It is a pretty solid look. I do think I like this more than the base. The base just kind of seems meh in visuals, although it does match the Strand effect out of the barrel a little bit more accurately. And lastly, as always, it goes projection that you can just rightfully ignore. Also, I don't think that Savathun that I think that may be Zuvarath, because if I remember, Savathun is more, I mean, I don't know, it's Destiny, they, they can make it whatever they want, and speaking of whatever they want, this Sparrow is going to remain unseen, as with that, that is the end of the reset update, now with that, of course, the episode will be picking up in two weeks, and just as a note, I wanted to say, I'm a fan of the timing of these episodes, I know there was some community backlash just because they didn't like the idea of three weeks on, three weeks off, three weeks on, three weeks off, but personally just because pretty much the season ended and next thing you know the next season was within four weeks, I actually approved of that just because mentally I remember sometimes season end you may have ha a month or two until the next one, with this it was less than a month easily until the next season happened, I honestly didn't even expect Re uh, Revenant to be around the corner so soon, so hearing that it's two weeks away I am pretty excited for what is coming to Destiny in addition to the Dev Inside blogs. With that. My name is Mad Scorpion, and if you could l drop a comment on whether or not this was helpful, like, subscribe, whatever you can do to improve the basically anything on my channel. Any sort of interaction helps. I hope you know that interacting in any way, even if it's just viewing, is more than appreciated from me. And I will see you in the next video.